what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and i appreciate you being here today i am back with another destiny video and we're going to cover this week at bungie for the 8th of march 2018 now this one is a big one a massive update basically telling us about many changes coming to the sandbox which is basically what's letting the game down i mean the sandbox needs crucial changes to revive the game uh, i'm going to read through all and i'm going to give you guys my honest opinion whether i think this is enough or not because at the end of the day destiny 2 is dead it's in the worst day i can ever remember destiny being and major changes are needed to revive the game are they mentioned within this update i doubt it but we will see but i'm hopeful people i really am hopeful so this week at Bungie, Lord Saladin returned to host the final 4v4 Iron Banner. New weapons are directly available from Saladin's stock, or can be earned through Iron Engrams. This isn't your last chance to earn those Season 2 ornaments, as Iron Banner will return after Destiny Update 1.1.4 is released, featuring 6v6 gameplay. Speaking of the 1.1.4 update, gotta go fast, last week Cosmo asked you fine readers to set an agenda on what we'll talk about in a week's article. The overwhelming response, Sandbox. While we're still in the process of finishing development on 1.1.4, senior Crucible designer Kevin Yanes and design lead Josh Hamrick are here to get a bit more granular on what's coming on March 27th. Quoting Kevin right here, Hey everyone, Kevin here from the Crucible team. I'm dropping by to share the details on the rest of our changes heading into update 1.1.4. As Derek mentioned in last week's TWAB, Iron Banner, Rumble and Mayhem are making a triumphant return to Destiny 2 with a few twists. Iron Banner has become 6v6, Mayhem features 90% fewer Nova Bombs, <laughs> that's a, yeah, well we needed that, fix this issue found during the dawning, and Rumble has welcomed two additional players into the fray. There is a lot to get excited about in update 1.1.4, but something the team really wanted to do was go back and refine the core experience. Looking at the feedback, it was clear that the community felt there were two key areas for improvement in the Crucible, time to kill and team shotting. So we set our sights on reworking systems, mechanics and values to tackle those two areas. Does this mean you're changing the time to kill? When we looked at the core feedback on time to kill in the Crucible, we saw that it was mostly stemmed from a lack of excitement or spikes of intensity you all came to expect from a Destiny experience. This came in the form of feedback that stated the game was too slow or the core loop was too stale. We agree and have worked with Sandbox to increase the pace of the Crucible as a whole. Josh is going to speak to all the Sandbox changes here in a bit and I won't steal his thunder. So alongside all of the great changes the Sandbox team has made, we're setting our sights on making the Crucible a faster, more dynamic and more action packed experience on the activity side. Let's get down to brass tacks on how we're planning to change the Crucible and the delivery of the goal stated above. Here is an overview of the changes we're bringing in 1.1.4. Respawn and Revive were tuned in all game modes. Play respawn timers for all quick play modes has been reduced to 2 seconds, damn that's quick. Player respawn timers for survival has been reduced to 7 seconds. Revive lockout time in countdown has been reduced to 7 seconds. Players no longer lose revive tokens on death. Some good changes there in my opinion. Power ammo respawn timers were adjusted across the board. Power ammo respawn timers in Iron Banner has been reduced by 50%. Damn! Power ammo respawn timers for all quick player mods have been reduced by 30%. Power ammo respawn timers in survival has been reduced by 40%. Power ammo respawn timers in countdown has been reduced by 25%. Ammo counts have been adjusted in relation to these timers and in relation to weapon type. In almost all cases weapons either retained the same ammo counts or received a buff. Swords and rockets were brought down to stay in line with the rest of the weapon offering. Enemy players now drop their power ammo on death. This brick is now networked to all players regarding a faction. Secure their power ammo to keep it from your foes or steal off your enemy's ghost. But be quick because those bricks don't stay in the world forever. All these changes correlate to create an experience that relies less on clumping with your team and focuses more on rewarding quick reflexes, thinking and movement. But what about competitive? During development of 1.1.4, we realised that while we reduced the team shot in quick play and iron banner effectively, we hadn't quite done the same to competitive. Knowing this, we looked for a change that reinforced the following goals. 
reduce team clumping, reward individual players and incentivize flanks. With those goals in mind we look to take a big step in shifting the gameplay in competitive and trials. Starting in 1.1.4 we've opted to remove the tracker from all competitive and trials game modes. Damn! This means more communication is required to secure victories in competitive and trials matches. It also means that a crispy flank with power ammo is all the more powerful. Subverting expectations of reading opponents is more potent in matches with no tracker. In playtests we've already seen some clutching underdog comebacks and we can't wait to see what you all do in competitive and trials starting with the 1.1.4 update. That said we're always listening and reacting to feedback so please tell us what you think about this change and all of our one. 1.1.4 changes once they go live. Thank you so much for your time in reading and playing. We're proud and excited of the work that we've done on a 1.1.4 update and look forward to meeting you on the battlefield. Next up, Hamsalam Rick with some sandbox goodies. Caught in hand right here. Hello friends, as I mentioned last time, our goal for this update is to provide individual players with more hero moments by increasing overall speed and mobility, increasing the number of supers you charge to demolish your enemies, and increasing the frequency and impact of our most montage worthy power weapons, especially in the Crucible. With update 1.1.4 drawing ever closer, it feels like a good time to swing back by and provide some updates and additional clarity to what this patch will bring. The first thing you should know, we are very excited for this update to go live and after weeks of solid playtesting, some with external participants, we feel like this is really shaping up to be an update you will be happy with. Huge shout out to everyone involved that helped the list of possible changes grow instead of shrink. Also to those who playtested and gave us quality actionable feedback. Now here's an updated version of the list of changes first detailed in the February 1st web. New and or updated entries are highlighted in bold. All three glides plus catapult and strafe lift have been retuned and buffed to make them faster and more unique. The mobility stat range has been expanded and completely retuned as well. In short, everyone gets faster and the high end is higher. The player's ground cap speed has been increased, allowing for faster total movement speed regardless of how you may get there. Arc Strider, Sentinel and Striker all move faster and at the same speed as one another while in their supers. Arc Strider as a whole is performing well in PvP but mostly due to its neutral game perks. We've made the following changes in an effort to get the super to be a more competitive option. Faster attack animations, faster dodge animations and increased range of all attacks. Damn! The previous shoulder charge changes are being reverted allowing shoulder charge to be used as a movement mode once again. Stormblade has been improved, reduced costs for front swords, allowing for one additional throw, increased super duration extension gained from everlasting fire, removed all in-air accuracy penalties while swift strike is active, reduced the uh, Icarus dash cooldown, increased the grenade and melee energy, heat rises, gives you per kill, invisibility on dodge slash smoke updates, invisibility on dodge no longer breaks aim assist or projectile tracking in PvP, unchanged in PvE. Dodging still breaks both aim assist and projectile tracking, but only for the duration of the actual dodge. Increase the duration of invisibility on dodge by one second. Increase the duration of smoke bomb invisibility by one second. Supers recharge faster for everyone. Supers now recharge 1 minute 40 seconds faster. A cooldown reduction of 25%. Now that is actually a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Mods that reduce grenade, melee and class ability cooldowns have been buffed to allow up to 2 times faster cooldowns. Damn! This is not replacing mods 2.0 which was recently delayed. More information is available below. We've buffed several weapon archetypes including, but not limited to, hand cannons, pulse rifles, sniper rifles and shotguns. And a few specific perks as well. A key goal here is to make shotguns, snipers and fusion rifles more prevalent in the game. Pulse rifles, increase PvE damage for all pulses, increase rate of fire for adaptive and high impact pulses, increased base damage for adaptive, high impact and rapid fire pulses, increased precision multiplier for lightweight pulses, decreased precision multiplier for adaptive pulses. This keeps precision damage close to where it is now but putting most of the buff into body shots, though it is still an increase in precision damage overall. Scout rifles, increase PvE damage for all scouts, increase base damage for high impact scouts. Hand cannons, increase PvE damage for all hand cannons, increase precision multiplier for precision hand cannons, increase hit fire accuracy on consoles, increase ADS accuracy on consoles. Sidearms, increase PvE damage for all sidearms, increase hit fire accuracy, increased ADS accuracy, increased infantry size, allowing more reserve ammo to be stored. 
increased minimum range, added an ADS movement bonus, SMGs, increased PVE damage for all SMGs, set up ticks to 1.5 times, increased inventory size allowing more reserve ammo to be stored, linear fusion rifles, increased PVE damage for all linear fusions, increased position multiplier, increased aim assist, reduced flinch multiplier. Shotguns, increased PVE damage for all shotguns, increased infantry size allowing more reserve ammo to be stored, increased aim assist for serious precision shotguns, sniper rifles, increased PVE damage for all snipers, increased precision multiplier, increased aim assist, increased infantry size allowing more reserve ammo to be stored, grenade launcher, increased blast radius, Assault Rifles, Decreased Range and Aim Assist Stats for Precision Autos, You Use Gift, Base Damage is not changed. A few weapon perks are also getting updates. High Impact Reserves, Increased PvE Damage, Kill Clip, Increased PvE Damage, Rampage, Increased PvE Damage, Increased Duration, Dragonfly, Increased Damage, Increased Radius, Stronger Visual Effects, Grave Rubber, Reloads 0.5 Magazine instead of 0.3, Time Payload, Splits Damage 55 Explosive slash 45 Direct instead of Previous Split which was more Direct Damage, Explosive rounds, decreased PvE explosive rounds damage. This increase has been compensated for with an increase in PvE damage for the base weapons. Your weapons with explosive rounds will not do less damage after 1.1.4 update. Just like last time, we have a few additional notes to wrap things up. Mods rework. First, let's talk about the changes to the potency of ability cooldown mods. In our last update, we mentioned that we were going to weigh and buff ability cooldowns at the same time we dropped the mods rework. Over the last few weeks, it has become obvious that the mod rework was going to need more time to come together due to the scope of the changes. That decision, which has already been accounted for in the last roadmap that you saw, is ultimately going to be a win for all of us. It gives us more time to deliver something we believe will add value to the game, however, we understood we should not delay the much needed improvements to ability cooldowns. So while there are many many improvements to mods planned for the future, we are going to greatly increase the output for ability cooldown mods in update 1.1.4. Four. Invisibility, Night Stalkers, the day of reckoning is soon upon us. Our invisible exploits may have barely been seen, but they have most certainly been felt. In 1.1.4, our ability to ninja smoke out to avoid any and all incoming fire and all lightning is going to be reduced down to pure skill alone. Not that we'd ever admit to it being anything but, as one and only two items deemed nerf worthy on the entire list of incoming sandbox changes. As we hunters shall deal with this as we deal with everything, we'll take it as a compliment and solid proof of our endless supply of talent, and never ever let the locks and titans hear the end of it. Currently, initiate dodge and throw smoke, dodging temporary kills, aim assist and projectile tracking allowing you to actually dodge things. Smoke just immediately jumps to Initiate invisibility For the duration of invisibility, aim assist and projectile tracking remain disabled Dodge finishes Invisibility expires Aim assist and tracking are re-enabled Coming soon in 1.1.4 PvP only Initiate dodge or throw smoke Dodging temporary kills aim assist and projectile tracking allowing you to actually dodge things Smoke just immediately jumps to Initiate invisibility, dodge finishes, aim assist and tracking are re-enabled. Invisibility expires. No, nothing changes for PvE except that they also get the 1 second duration increase to invisibility. Snipers. In the last update I mentioned how a nasty bug has crept into our scopes and made it near impossible for us to correct tune sniper flinch. That fix has been implemented and those changes will go live in a 1.2.0 update planned for May. Sweet sweet sniper action is on the way. This is not the end, while we are excited to get this update into your hands and we believe you're really going to enjoy the changes, we all know these aren't the only changes we'll need to make to address feedback, it's just the first leg of a long journey, we hope this makes the game more fun for you all, that it begins to bring back hero moments and makes you feel a bit more like tiny gods. But we also hope you know there is more to come and this gets you excited to come along for the ride. See you all again, Hamrick. And that is basically it guys. They go, do go on to talk about the companion app, which if you do want to read through that, I'll link this tab in the video description. So people, the changes here are serious changes. To me, they're reverting a lot of this shit back to Destiny 1 when PvP was actually fun. Yes, it was unbalanced here and there. Things were OP, but actually added to the fun of the game. There's absolutely 
absolutely nothing like that in Destiny 2's PvP at the minute. There's just nothing to play for. It gets boring after a game. It's slow. It isn't quick paced. You get team shot around every corner. And these are the changes they seem to be working on and fixing. Now for me this update sounds good. The sandbox changes seem epic. But for me the real turning point is in May with the DLC. Where we get seasonable ranks and so forth. And new content to play PvE wise. If the community doesn't return to the game. Then I don't think they ever will. I mean it's real sad times it really is, I mean Destiny changed my life for the better, I mean I make a lot of videos, people think I'm bashing on the game, it's tough love, I want this game to be good, I want Destiny 2 to be the game we all wanted it to be before release, but it just didn't turn out that way, and I ain't going to continue to sugarcoat the bullshit that Bungie tried pulling with us with the second game, if something needs to be said you guys know I will say it, and I don't care if I get blacklisted by Bungie, I honestly just do not care, but the changes here we are seeing are great changes, whether or not they're going to save the game is a different story. I mean a lot of people are saying now it's too little too late and a lot of people have moved on I mean I've been posting I mean I ain't posted a Destiny video for almost a week I've been posting Fortnite I mean I don't get as many views as my Destiny videos but it's a growing process but I will return to Destiny I want Destiny to be great again I really do and like I said in my opinion if change is going to come with the community and the game it will come in May with that DLC and everything else planned to change this game for the better but we will see people we will see let me know what you think about these changes down below within that comment section let me know if you also think it's too late for Bungie I look forward to reading all your comments if you enjoyed the video leaving a like it really does help me out if you're new around here and enjoy what you just witnessed be sure to subscribe and hopefully people i will see you on that next one always in the wrong